when I sat down with former President Bill Clinton this week in New York City at the Clinton Global Initiative. We spoke about the U.S. economy, the election, world affairs. But the part of the interview that grabbed so much attention was about his dramatic weight loss and the diet that helped him shed two dozen pounds. And I live on uh, uh, beans, legumes, vegetables, fruit. I drink a protein supplement every morning, I, no dairy. I drink almond milk mixed in with fruit and a protein powder. So I get the protein for the day when I start the day out. And it changed my whole metabolism and I lost 24 pounds. And I got back to basically what I weighed in high school. But I did it for a different reason. I mean, I wanted to lose a little weight, but I didn't ever dream this would happen. I did it because after I had this stent put in, I realized that even though it happens quite often that after you have bypasses, you lose the veins because they're thinner and weaker than arteries. The truth is that it clogged up, which means that the cholesterol was still calling buildup in my vein that was part of my bypass. And thank God I could take the stents. I don't want it to happen again. So I did all this research and I saw that 82% of the people since 1986 who have gone on a plant-based, no dairy, no meat of any kind, no chicken, turkey. I eat very little fish. Once in a while, I'll have a little fish. Not often. If you can do it, 82% of the people who've done that have begun to heal themselves. Their arterial blockage cleans up. The calcium deposit around their heart breaks up. Let's discuss uh, what the president, uh, former president, said uh, with the doctors behind the diet that helped the, uh, Mr. Clinton change his life. Uh, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn is the author of Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, and Dr. Dean Ornish is the author of The Spectrum. Uh, let me go to Dr. Esselstyn first. Uh, he mentioned both of you for inspiring him to begin this diet. Walk us through uh, this diet, Dr. Esselstyn. Why is this diet so good, especially for those individuals who have a history of heart disease? Well, thank you, uh, Wolf, for uh, having me on this evening with my good friend, uh, Dean Ornish. There's no question that, if the truth were known, that uh, coronary artery disease is a toothless paper tiger that need never exist. And if it does exist, it need never, ever progress. What we've heard from President Clinton is the remarkable change that he's been willing to make to remove completely from his, his uh, nutrition those foods which we know will devastate and injure the inner lining of your arteries. And the remarkable thing is the capacity that the body has to heal itself. And when you do what Pre President Clinton has done, will you completely try to remove any foods that are going to injure your vessel? The bar body has this remarkable capacity to begin to heal itself. And I'm afraid that as a medical profession, we perhaps have uh, fallen down and really emphasized too much the drugs and the procedures and the operations which really treat the symptoms. They do not treat the causation of this illness. All this right. is one of the few times since Hippocrates that we have not told patients about the causation of their illness. Uh, uh, Dr. Ornish, are you on the exact same page as Dr. Esselstyn is? Yes, I am. And I want to just say I love and respect President Clinton. And so I was thrilled to hear that he's making these changes because I want him to live a long time like so many people do. And whatever your politics, he, he can inspire many people to make these changes. And what we've shown, you know, we tend to think it has to be a new drug or a new laser, something really high tech and expensive to be powerful. And what we've done in more than 33 years of research is show that these simple changes that we make in our lives, like what we eat, how we respond to stress, how much exercise we get, and how much love and support we have, can actually begin to reverse, not just prevent, but actually reverse chronic illnesses like heart disease and so on. And we found that almost more than 82% of the people who made these changes, as President Clinton indicated, were actually able to reverse the disease. So getting, rather than getting a, a quick fix like a bypass or a stent does, which doesn't treat the underlying cause, it's a little like mopping up the floor around a sink right. without turning off the faucet. It well, keeps coming back unless you change what caused it. Is this diet, Dr. Esselton, no dairy, no meat, no chicken, basically no fish, is this diet for everyone or only for those who have heart disease or a history of heart disease? Uh, one other thing I would add, and no oils, no processed oils. When you say no, like uh, olive oil, even olive oil, which supposedly is pretty healthy. Uh, I'm afraid I'm going to have a divergence of opinion there. 
Uh, yes, I would include absolutely olive oil, uh, sunflower oil, safflower oil, corn oil, soybean oil. They're out. Now, uh, you know, the, since we know that these foods are injuring people, why would we ever want them to have them on the menu of our school children? When you say, you question, why wait until people do have heart disease? We know, for instance, that if we do autopsies on our GIs who died in Korea and Vietnam, then roughly 80% of these young GIs will already have gross evidence of coronary disease you can see without a microscope. If we are going to ever make a breakthrough in this epidemic of cardiac disease, we really have to start when it's young. This is, this is pretty so amazing. So you're saying the young, young kids should not drink milk? Is that what you're saying, uh, Dr. Ornish? No, I'm not. I'm saying that there's a spectrum of choices. And what President Clinton is doing is what you might call the pound of cure. If you're trying to reverse a chronic disease, like heart disease, we also show that these same changes can stop or reverse the progression of early prostate cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, elevated cholesterol. Then you need to make bigger changes. But if you're just trying to lose a few pounds or get your cholesterol down, you can start by making moderate changes. And if that's enough, great. If not, you can do more. What matters most is your overall way of eating and living. So. If you indulge yourself one day, eat healthier the next. Dr. Esselstyn, is this the diet that you personally uh, live on? Uh, the one that I described earlier, yes, I most uh, certainly do. My dad had his first heart attack at age 43, and uh, I've been uh, eating this way for over 26 years. And do Dr. Ornish, is that the way you live? No chicken, no, no meat, no dairy, no, no uh, 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 I guess some of the fun things in life, is that what, I, what I'm hearing you say? <laughs> you know, the old, the old joke is, am I going to live longer? Is it just going to seem longer if I eat this way? And it's not all or nothing. What you include in your diet is as important as what you exclude. There are hundreds of thousands of protective substances. I also recommend people take three or four grams a day of fish oil because the omega-3 fatty acids can be so protective. So but we heard Dr. Russell say no oil. Well, we're slightly uh, different yeah. opinion on that particular one. I think the omega studies have shown that just three or four grams a day of fish oil can reduce your incidence of sudden cardiac death by up to 80 percent. It can reduce your risk of prostate and breast cancer. If you have a, if you're a, a pregnant woman or breastfeeding, it can raise your child's IQ. And so I think the evidence there is pretty compelling. I take fish oil, uh, Dr. Eggleston. Is, is that a bad idea? Well, I'm not going to really wrestle with Dean over fish oil. We have so much that is in common, and we're striving together to really make a the basic, the basic point here really is that, that by eating these whole foods and getting away from processed foods, getting away from the, really the, the dairy, anything with a mother, anything with a face, meat, fish, and chicken, it's it really, it's so incredible how powerful the body can be. And if we're going to have a seismic revolution of health in this country, which is really right at our fingertips, when the, the, the major uh, behavior that has to change is, interestingly enough, our food. That is the absolute is, key card. It trumps everything. I agree. And let me just say this. You know, when you make these changes, because these mechanisms are so dynamic, your brain gets more blood. You think more clearly. You have more energy. Your skin gets more blood, so you don't age as quickly. Even your sexual organs get more blood in the same way that Viagra works. So, yeah, you'll probably live longer, but you'll also feel better. And what's sustainable is joy and pleasure and freedom. And when you make these changes, most people find they feel so much better so quickly, it reframes the reason for change from fear of dying to joy of living, and that's what's sustainable. Dr. Dean Ornish and Dr. Caldwell uh, Esselstyn, uh, you got a good shout out from uh, President uh, Clinton. Uh, he's on your diet. Uh, he's doing the best he can. He's very happy. I saw him in action eating some of those uh, beans and vegetables uh, <laughs> away from some of the other fun foods, as we like to say. Uh, let's hope he lives a long and healthy life. Guys, thanks very much for coming in. Amen. Thank you. And thanks, Caldwell. You're doing uh, great work. Absolutely. Thanks, if Dean. You, Keep it up. Uh,